stuff is here to replace the factory intake because uh, a few weeks ago I was merging onto the highway and in preparation to go down the on-ramp I put the car in second, floored the gas, and the car cut power. Worn out engine mounts and sub-zero temperatures led to a cracked intake tube. There are a couple of reasons you might want to do an intake like this. One of them is if you're a stupid kid like me who wants to hot rod their car. Of course it's not really a cold air intake in the sense of, you know, what most people do on their cars, which is to just, you know, run some stupid piece of pipe straight into the corner of the engine bay with a giant K&N cone filter on it. Um, and everybody's seen the internet debate of, oh yeah, you put a cone filter in your engine bay and it'll make you more power. And then half the people say it makes more power, and the other half the people say it makes less power because it's sucking in hot air. Whatever the case is, don't care. There are kind of three things that I'm hoping to get out of this intake. One is you know, a little bit better airflow because I'm not running a corrugated tube here it would be nice. I don't expect to be able to feel that. I could see potentially getting a small bump in throttle response. I don't really expect it. Another thing I'm hoping for is that by having a piece of aluminum pipe just before the butterfly valve on the intake manifold, I might get more induction sound. I mic'd up the engine bay for a video a while back, I guess I'll link it here, um, where you can hear the induction sound once I'm out of first gear going into second gear and opening the throttle. It's kind of a nice growly sound when the butterfly valve opens. I'd like to hear more of that, so hopefully this pipe will do that for me. The final thing I'm hoping for is a little bit of an increase in durability. Silicone being nice, flexible material should hold up to temperature changes and vibration a lot better than the original plastic intake tube. All that is to say that I'm gonna try out this intake, not expecting to see much out of it. I will mic up the engine bay once I have this tube installed. I'll play a clip for you of the stock setup and then this setup so you can hear if there is any difference and decide for yourself whether or not it was worth it. I don't know, it's an experiment. I'm just kinda of curious to see what happens. We got that tube popped into the front of the air filter box and going through the front of the car there. And then um, I've got this tube cut to length. To cut these, just put a hose clamp around and then cut gently around that. You're supposed to take a really sharp knife blade and just do three or four passes around, all the way around until it comes off, but I'm lazy and like doing things faster, so. Box cutter, couple of passes all the way in and then all the way around. As long as you're gentle and make sure the knife stays up against the side of the hose clamp, you get a pretty straight cut. I've installed this hump connector so that I can show you why you want to use a hump connector and not just a straight. Hump connectors allow for some play in the connection. And that's important because the mass airflow meter mounts here to the inside of the engine bay, it hard mounts, and then the other end of this pipe mounts here on the manifold which bolts the engine which shakes around. Now the reason I think I can get away with only one hump connector is because I have this torque mount installed so the engine shouldn't rock, at least not nearly as much as it did when it was stock. So hopefully one hump connector is enough to take up the play between the top of the engine moving and the MAF, which is not going to move. This is the inlet to the filter box. This is the hole in the front of the vehicle where the air tube comes in. On the other side of this hole, behind the grill, you'll see this piece of tubing. It mounts in approximately this orientation. The problem with this thing is that here it's about a 63 mil opening, but it bottlenecks down to here which is probably like a 35 mil opening. All this stuff is 70 mil. The smallest point is the 60-ish millimeter inner diameter of the intake manifold. Even that intake manifold is a lot bigger than this. Maybe they did some super detailed analysis and decided that this was the ideal size for efficiency or the ideal size for emissions or the ideal size and shape to reduce um, noise from the intake? I have no idea. And I don't really care because all of those things are not as cool as having a nice intake sound. I have all the silicone tube mocked up. That piece is going to have to get shortened a little bit. And of course I have to put two ports in it 
for the idler control valve and the PCV. Really the only major thing left to figure out is the piece of aluminum that goes in between these two sections. As it is right now, if I covered the entire straight section of the aluminum tube with rubber, it would dampen the sound. Trying to cut back as much silicon as possible and leave as much aluminum as possible exposed, uh, I think is going to be beneficial just for the sake of maybe getting a little bit more sound, more sound. After a little bit of back and forth cutting the silicone couplers and then trimming the aluminum tube, I've got it all to line up. Um, pretty much just needs hose clamps. Um, I still have to put in the ports for the IACV and PCV, but looks like a pretty complete intake tube. So I'm very happy. This piece I still have to trim up to about uh, about there, but I have all of this space uh, to mount two ports. Got the two ports installed for the idler control valve and the PCV. These are just uh, marine through hull fittings. Um, these aren't under a whole lot of loads. They don't have to be anything fancy. I think that one was from Amazon. That was from eBay. Um, there's a little bit of vacuum here, but not much. And um, hopefully these do the trick. This one um, just draws a little bit of vacuum for the PCV and it also winds up having oil drip through it. And then this one, um, again, just a little bit of airflow for the uh, idler control valve. One other thing to note with the way I built this one is that I was trying to maximize the amount of aluminum pipe that was exposed, just in hopes I get more sound out of it. What that meant was that I moved the MAF sensor as far forward as I could get it to get as much pipe here on this bottom straight section of the 60 degree elbow. And to mount the MAF sensor forward, it moved forward like, I want to say an inch and a half, approximately. And to get it to mount, I just took the stock bracket, and you can see here where it used to mount. I just flipped it upside down and mounted it on the forwardmost bolt. That way, the uh, angled elbow on it goes forward, and it's pushed as far forward on these two bolts as it can be. And it, it feels pretty solid there. They used to mount at the rear mounting hole on the MAF sensor. Now it mounts on the forward mounting hole in the MAF sensor. They're both threaded from the factory, so it's no big deal to switch which hole you're using. 